Hi, this is Jerry Hamilton. Just want to show you my design for a variable compression engine. We'll go through the models and then we'll do a bit of theory and then I'll show you some practicals. So this is basically my engine which wants to change the compression ratio. We have a look, turn it around this way. What I am basically doing is I'm raising and lowering the crankshaft by rotating a shaft at the bottom. So it's 180 degrees from low compression to high compression. Low compression, high compression. And in the practical we'll see that again as it actually works. We have the pistons at high compression rotating around high compression and we want to slow the um, vehicle down or we want to cruise or we get oxides of nitrogen are too high we can just go from high compression to low compression and then run it on a low compression engine. So that's the four cylinder high compression low compression. So basically if we look side on to it, it's got an arm which drops up and down. The drive goes from the crankshaft to a gear at the side and goes to a, a lap at the back. Drives along this shaft and then drives out to the front and also drives out to the back. So you can have a four cylinder, this is a four cylinder, or we can have an eight cylinder working in the same principle. So we can have a high compression or a low compression. Basically it's the same system except we've got crankshaft going up and down in that position at the top. And same thing here at the bottom. driving an 8 cylinder so it's actually it's actually a U8 not a V8 right, thanks diesel, methylated spirits, petrifying, kerosene, anything we wanted to now that we can change the compression ratio for a good combustion. So there's high compression, low compression. Low compression, high compression. So what's the fuss about all this variable compression ratio? We don't need to have high compression ratio for all engines. We need some, sometimes we might need it low, sometimes we might need it high. So we can save the fuel and power when we don't need it. The problem with fuel is we need air to combust. And air is a mixture of uh, the nitrogen and also the oxygen. And if we heat up the oxygen too much, it, it burns. And But if we heat up the nitrogen too much, we produce oxides of nitrogen. There's seven oxides of nitrogen, and these are, this is what the smog is that we get these days with, uh, with, the, with by burning air. We also need to be able to burn any fuel that we want to. As long as the fuel, liquid fuel, can get through an injector, it'll burn, but it depends on the compression ratio. So if we can, can change the compression ratio, we can also change what fuel that we're burning. And to adjust the compression ratio, we can use a knock sensor. The knock sensor can then vary the, the compression to suit the fuel and the conditions. And also, we don't really need really, really expensive catalytic converters because they've got palladium and rhodium in them. And um, if we can save that money, good. Also, too, is we don't want to be pumping exhaust gases back into the into the system to try and help reduce the um, the oxides of nitrogen. So that is one of the reasons why varying the compression ratio is important. 
Right, now this is the theory side of the uh, video show. At the moment we have a, a pressure versus a volume diagram. And as the piston goes up and down, valves will open and close of course. So here we have the swept volume, swept volume, the clearance volume, and as of course as that changes we have our pressure. And here we have our atmospheric pressure. If we drop below atmospheric pressure, down in here, we have a thing called vacuum. And as the piston goes down, okay, it gets it sucks the fuel in, then compresses it, goes bang. Goes back out again. And the exhaust valve opens up. Basic auto cycle. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Here we have the Carnot cycle. And the Carnot cycle just deals with the compression, the burning of the gas, and the end of it coming out. So we just deal with this section in here. And of course when the piston is compressed, this section here is the work that is done to compress the gas. So and as you can see up here, this angle here gets quite steep. So if I change this volume, the small amount, my pressure increases drastically. So, and then of course, once the work is done, work is released from the gas, pushes the pressure up, and then of course the pressure piston goes down. So this area in here is the work that is done from, from the energy, from the gas, the burning, the burning of the gas, and this is the work done by compressing it. So the heat is going in, and the heat is going out. The difference between the two is our thermal efficiency. Compression ratio is a clear, is a, is a ratio between this volume, this volume here and this volume here. Total volume, finished volume. So that's the, that's the clearance volume plus the swept volume divided by the clearance volume. Okay, a variable compression ratio. On my engine, I am changing the clearance volume and I'm keeping the swept volume the same. So the clearance volume changes and the swept volume goes up and down. Okay, and how to change the compression ratio? Most engines at the moment do a, they compress it and they open and close the valves at different times. And this section here is either can be advanced or once when my exhaust valve opens up and this is where my inlet valve opens up. And of course I could change that to over here somewhere and I could change my inlet valve to here. So that's how we change the compression ratio. So now my effective stroke is from there to there, not from there to there. That's the most common way of doing it. VVTI do it the same way. Uh, um, the Hondas use uh, VTEC and a few other people use different ones as they go. My design of the compression ratio is by moving the conrod further down or the piston further down I have extended this section here and brought this one here down. Okay, so by moving the conrod, by moving the piston conrod and crankshaft up and down, the swept volume stays the same and the clearance volume increases or decreases as the case may be. Here we have the piston going up and the piston going down again. So I am effectively just moving the whole system down one. Okay, so we we're at light load, and the important bit is this section here. By moving this piston down, this angle here isn't as much. 
So now my work required to compress this gas is a lot less. And of course my power coming out is a lot less. If I wanted to increase it, this line would go up further and down further. This is the practical part of the uh, video. This is where I've got up to so far. As you can see I've got the finger, there's one um, gear lot, there's another gear lot. On this gear lot here is the cam. Now if I rotate the first one around, you should be able to see the cam moving up and down. So that's low compression, high compression. This blocks out of the way. Cam up, cam down. And I'm just rotating that. So that's the base so far of my variable compression engine. This is the arm of the uh, engine. Uh, it's got um, two gears at the top and I call a spur. This arm here moves up and down, up and down like that to adjust the compression ratio. There's the gear at the side. Crankshaft drum will drive this one, and then goes on to this one and then drives out the back as we'll soon see. And then up the other end, oh, where is it? there it is. There's the other gear which will then turn out and drive the front. So there's the arms, the swinging arm for the engine. Here's it with the uh, crankshaft in place. So the crankshaft. That one at the back goes up there to drive that one. A bit of rust on there. It's because it's been sitting in my garage for about two years. And how we lift crankshaft up and down high compression low compression high compression low compression here's the uh, Crankshaft installed with the two gears at each end. There's one there to drive the front, timing belts and pulleys and stuff. And the one here at the back to drive the flywheel, the crankshaft, and other bits and pieces. Just rotate this bit around. As you can see, it's all one for one. Of course, you could gear this one, that one to that one to a different gear ratio if you wanted to. But the front one has to be the same as the other side because this is the one that's going to be driving the timing gears and oh bugger that okay there's the crankshaft I can turn it again and again let's have a look at low ratio low ratio low ratio And this is where I'm up to at the moment. Um, I haven't got the cylinders bored yet. As we can go around here, we can see there's two belts going up to the cam, up to the cam timing. And over here, and there's Doggy. So we and back to this. Around here's the flywheel. Oh, I should have put that on. Bugger it. And back down here. Away. So what's 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 from here? Well, I'd like to um, I'd like to finish the project, but I've got other projects going, and also my workshop is no longer available. And keeping this to myself isn't helping anybody, so that's why I'm letting it out there and let everyone else have a go at it. Thank you, Jerry Hamilton.